Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is resonance enclosed in the air columns, and we want to know how do you draw the standing wave patterns for the various harmonics of a closed in air column, and how are the frequencies and wavelengths of these harmonics related? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed open-end air columns, and I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. In this video, I'll be discussing closed-end air columns, but before I do, let's do a quick discussion of the differences between an open and a closed-end air column. When it comes to an air column, we're referring to a column of air, usually inside of a tube or pipe or a musical instrument, that can be forced to vibrate at one of its natural frequencies and thus produce a loud sound. There's two types of air columns, open and closed in. An open in air column has both ends of the column open to the surrounding atmosphere such that air can vibrate into and out of the air column. But for a closed in air column, only one of the ends is open to the surroundings and the other end is closed off. Now, for an open end and a closed end air column, the standing wave patterns display an antinode at the open end since that's the location that air can vibrate wildly in and out of the tube. But the closed end of a closed end air column would display a node since at that closed end, air is unable to vibrate in and out of the tube. This diagram represents the vibrational pattern of air particles of an open-end air column as it resonates with its first harmonic. You'll notice that antinodes are formed at the two open ends of the air column. Air at those ends is free to vibrate into and out of the air column from a maximum positive to a maximum negative displacement. And in between every two antinodes, a node will be formed, and that is shown in the middle of the air column. Now, in between the middle of the air column and the ends of the air column, air is still available to, is still free to vibrate, just not a maximum amount like it does at the open ends. If I were to translate this vibrational pattern into a standing wave pattern, the easiest way to do it is to plot the displacement of the air particles as a function of their location within the air column, and doing so would result in this standing wave pattern. You'll notice antinodes again at the open ends where air vibrates from a maximum positive to a maximum negative displacement, and in the very center of the air, of the air column, there's no displacement whatsoever. Now for a closed end air column, at the closed end, air cannot vibrate at all, so we would see a node at that location. But at the open end of a closed end air column, air has a maximum positive to negative to positive displacement as it vibrates into and out of the, the air column. Now in between the closed end and the open end, we would observe particle vibration, just not as much as shown here in the diagram. As you approach the closed end, there's less and less vibration as you approach the open end, there's more and more vibration. We can translate this vibrational pattern into a standing wave pattern by plotting at the displacement of the air particles as a function of their location within the air column. At the, at the open end, we would display an antinode as air vibrates from a maximum positive displacement to a maximum negative displacement. But at the closed end, a node will be formed since air is not free to vibrate or dis be displaced at that location. The vibrational pattern and standing wave pattern that we just saw for the closed-in air column is the pattern for the first harmonic, or fundamental frequency. But a closed-in air column has a number of frequencies at which it naturally vibrates at, and each one is associated with a standing wave pattern. To draw the next standing wave pattern for a harmonic, we would simply add a node and an antinode to the first harmonic. We keep a node at the closed-in and an antinode at the open-in, and in between open and close, we add the additional node and antinode, and we draw the best looking waveform that we can. Now we can repeat the process for the next two harmonics by adding a node and antinode, and we'd have something that looks like this. Now you'll note that we call these the first, the third, the fifth, and the seventh harmonic, and while that's not entirely intuitive at this point, we'll develop some mathematics that explain why we call it that way. For now, just make a note that closed in ear columns do not have even numbered harmonics. All the harmonics are numbered odd numbers. 
Now I can inspect each of these standing wave patterns and write an algebraic statement in which I relate the length of the air column to the wavelength of the waves that force it to resonate. Doing so demands that I understand that this is a quarter of a wavelength and this is a half of a wavelength and this is one full wavelength. So I inspect the first harmonics pattern and I notice there's a quarter of a wavelength there. So I write L equal one quarter times wavelength. That Greek letter that you see there is lambda. It's the symbol for wavelength that we've used throughout the sound in the waves unit. Now for if I inspect the third harmonic I will observe that there's one half of a wavelength plus a quarter of a wavelength and that sums up to three quarters of a wavelength so I write L equal three quarters times lambda. I repeat the process for the fifth and the seventh harmonic and I end up with five fourths and seven fourths of a wavelength in my equation. Now I can perform some algebra on each of these statements and transform it from an L equal equation to a lambda equal equation. Doing so for the first harmonic means I have to divide both sides of the equation by 0.25. And if I do, I end up with wavelength equal four times the length of the air column. I'm going to write that though as four divided by one. I have to divide both sides by 0.75 for the third harmonic and end up with 1.33. I'm going to write that as four thirds. And for the fifth harmonic, I'm going to end up with 0.80 times the, the length. I'm going to write that as four fifths. And finally, for the last harmonic, I I write it as four sevenths. Now I want you to inspect the fraction in front of L on the right side of each of these equations. It's in, in every equation is four divided by a number and the number in the denominator is one, three, five, and seven. And that one, three, five, and seven corresponds to the harmonic number for the first, the third, and the fifth, and the seventh harmonic, which explains why we don't have even numbered harmonics for closed in air columns. There's no denominator there that's ever even. It's always going to be an odd number, simply the consequence of having a node at the closed end and an anti-node at the open open end. Now I can use each of these wavelength equations to calculate the wavelength of each of the harmonics if I know the length of the air column. For instance, if I know the air column is 1.2 meters long, I can substitute 1.2 meters into my wavelength equations and I can calculate the numbers 4.8, 1.6, 0.96, and 0.69, that last number being rounded. Now it's important to note that the 1.6, the wavelength of the third harmonic, is one-third the wavelength of the first. And the 0.96, the wavelength of the fifth harmonic, is one-fifth the wavelength of the first. And finally, the wavelength of the seventh harmonic is one-seventh the wavelength of the first harmonic. We just saw how there are very clear wavelength relationships for the various harmonics of a closed-in air column. But there are also very clear frequency relationships between the harmonics, and I'd like to explain the rationale behind it. Now the speed of sound is equal to frequency times wavelength, f times lambda, and the speed of sound will be about 340 meters per second for any one of these harmonics because it's dependent solely upon the temperature of the air. So if the speed is the same for all four harmonics shown here, then the frequency times wavelength value must be the same for all four harmonics. If I compare the equation for the third harmonic to that for the first harmonic, I notice that the wavelength of the third harmonic is one-third the wavelength of the first harmonic. So if its wavelength is one-third the size, its frequency must be three times larger in order for the product of frequency and wavelength to be the same. So the frequency of the third harmonic is three times that of the first harmonic. I can apply the same sort of reasoning to say that the, fr the wavelength of the fifth harmonic is one-fifth the wavelength of the first harmonic, so its frequency must be five times bigger. And for the seventh harmonic, the wavelength is one-seventh that of the first harmonic, so its frequency must be seven times that of the first harmonic. In general, I can make the claim that the frequency of the nth harmonic, where n is some harmonic number, is equal to n multiplied by the frequency of the first harmonic. Knowing this equation, I can calculate the frequency of any harmonic if I know the frequency of the first harmonic. For instance, if I know the frequency of the first harmonic is 200 hertz, then the frequency of the third, fifth, and the seventh harmonic would be 3 times 200, 5 times 200, and 7 times 200 hertz. I'd like to review the mathematical and standing wave patterns for closed-in air columns beginning with these two equations here. 
n in the equation represents the harmonic number and would be an odd-numbered integer like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc. The wavelength of the nth harmonic is 4 divided by the harmonic number n multiplied by the length of the air column. And the frequency of the nth harmonic would be n multiplied by the fundamental frequency or first harmonic frequency f1. The table displays the standing wave patterns for the lowest five frequency harmonics of a closed-in air column. You'll notice in each of the pattern that the, there's a node at the closed end and an anti-node at the open end. As we go from one harmonic to the next harmonic, we're adding an additional node and anti-node. The number of nodes for the nth harmonic and the number of anti-nodes would be equal to n plus 1 divided by 2. These two columns display the expressions for calculating the wavelength and the frequency of the various harmonics based upon the wavelength and frequency of the first harmonic. So the wavelength of the nth harmonic is the wavelength of the first harmonic divided by n as shown in the wavelength column. For frequency, we multiply by n. So the frequency of the nth harmonic is always the frequency of the first harmonic multiplied by the, the value of n. As examples, let's consider these two columns from our table. The column labeled wavelength assumes that the length of the air column is 60 centimeters. Using the equation at the top here, we can say the wavelength of the first harmonic is 4 divided by 1 multiplied by 60 centimeters, 240 centimeters, or 2.40 meters. The wavelength of the third, the fifth, and the seventh, and the ninth harmonic is the 2.4 divided by the 3 by the 5, by the 7, and by the 9. The, some of the numbers you see are rounded. We'll assume that the frequency of the first harmonic is 150 hertz, and assuming that, we can calculate the frequency of any harmonic by multiplying by 3, by 5, by 7, and by 9 to get the numbers that you see here. It's so at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a simulation that allows you to ma manipulate a variable and observe the result. There's a Minds on Physics mission and a concept builder that gives you questions and immediate feedback to your answers, and finally a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.